My name is Georgina Reese. I'm a PhD student at the University of Manchester, and I'm going to pre present some recently published work on capturing interfacial instabilities with Jules Felix. Let's now talk about the motivation for modelling these types of flows before giving an overview of the changes I've made to the Jules Physics code. Then I'll be testing the model against a two phase Poisson flow case before investigating some mixing measures that are useful for these cases and then moving on to some conclusions. Firstly, the motivation. What is being modelled here is the flow and mixing of two viscous phases of similar density with a changing interface. These sorts of flows have many applications in industry, such as the production of foods and glasses. It's important to know here if the process goes unstable and how that instability develops, as well as how well mixed the product is. But these can, things can often be quite difficult or even dangerous to measure in practice. The aim then is to develop a computational model of flow of phases with different viscosities to investigate the onset and development of instabilities at the phase interface and also to investigate the advantages of different mixing measures. SPH is used because its mesh-free Lagrangian nature allows it to model highly non-linear deformations with possible interpenetration of phases. It can also naturally follow a changing interface, which is something that mesh methods such as the volume of fluid methods struggle to do. Next, the changes I've made to the Jules physics code. As an overview, for variable viscosity between particles, we must introduce a viscosity array so each particle can have its own viscosity, so that these particles can interact and maybe with different viscosities, the viscosity operator in the momentum equation must be modified. Then to choose viscosity for each phase when setting up a case, we introduce new options in the XML file, Make sure the code can store the parameters of each phase and apply it to particles according to their phase. Any instabilities must be physical, so we need to be mindful of errors introduced by SPH interpolation and discretization by considering the smoothing length and particle spacing, which also affects the capability of resolving deformations. So firstly, I added a viscosity array to Jules physics so that each SPH particle can have its own viscosity rather than there being a single viscosity for the flow. These viscosities are set in the XML case, along with options for viscosity model and parameters. Here on the left are some dual, are the Jules physics files which I've modified to do this, and on the right, some example Jules physics code where the new array has been added. Next, to modify the laminar viscosity operator so that it can take into account the possibility of interacting particles that can have different viscosities. So here I take the arithmetic mean of the two viscosities of the interacting particles. Uh, note that it reduces back to the original when the interacting particles have the same viscosity. Here is the implementation of the viscosity operator in Joule's physics for a CPU function. Here's the line of code that's been changed and highlighted where it takes the viscosities of the two particles that are interacting. Then the initialization of phases, this is based on the non-Newtonian multi-phase code. Here's a multi-phase structure which stores the phase properties, including uh, density, viscosity, uh, viscosity model and parameters for that model. On the right, we're specifying the phase properties in an XML case file in the special section for the corresponding MK fluid. And here are the properties that are specified. Also, there's a flag in the parameters telling us to use the viscosity phases option. Next, the phases must be initialized in Jules physics. So we loop over all the particles, uh, look at what phase they're in, and then set the density and the viscosity according to their phase. The figure on the right here shows that the viscosities have been applied to each phase, as in the XML example, with MK fluid 0 having viscosity 0 0.1 and MK fluid 1 having viscosity 0 0.05. I use the two-phase Poisson flow case for validation of this model. Here's the case setup where I've got fluid flow along a channel with periodic boundaries as with the single phase and it's driven by a constant body force. The channel is split into two phases of the same density but different viscosity and they can also have different widths. There's two key parameters here which is the phase viscosity ratio and the phase width ratio. Here's an example of a velocity profile across the channel. You can see it's not symmetrical when the phases have a different viscosity, with the maximum being in the less viscous phase. Uh, it's nice and close to the analytical solution and also displaying the same behaviours. In particular, there's a discontinuity of the velocity gradient at the interface. 
done a convergence study for this case. You can see that it converges to the analytical solution at approximately first order, which is what's to be expected with the simple boundary conditions. Uh, here I've used an L2 norm over the velocity of the ortho fluid particles. This video shows the flow developing and going unstable colored by velocity. You can first see the unsymmetric velocity profile develop, and then you can see that the instability starts to develop as a wave at the interface before spreading out across the channel. Now this sort of long wave length instability occurs when there's a discontinuity in the velocity gradient at the interface, as in the first velocity profile I showed. Investigations in the literature tend to use perturbation analysis to investigate this, and there are a few simulations. The instability depends only on viscosity ratio and phase width ratio, the M and N I introduced earlier, and is independent of the Reynolds number of the flow. These stability regions have been analytically derived using the perturbation analysis, and they depend on the phase viscosity ratio and the phase width ratio. I chose simulation points in each region which agree with the literature on their stability. The figures here show the development of the instability. On the left, the SPH figure where it's clear to see the deformation of the interface and the instability growing as time goes on and the shape of the interface as it develops. On the right, there's star CCM which uses the volume of fluid method the instability does appear, but the interface diffuses, so the growth and development of the instability is unclear. I then did an investigation into the instability growth rate. I chose this very unstable case in a square domain with a large difference in viscosities. I cho choose M sample points that are initially on the line of the interface and track their position across the channel with time. I define the onset of the instability to be when one of these particles is first a particle spacing it away from the original interface. I take the maximum over these sample points and fit an exponential line for a small time after the onset of instability so that the linear perturbation theory is still valid. I find a growth rate of 0.35, which is really close to the theoretical value of 0.34 and it demonstrates that SPH can capture this behaviour and possibly be used to investigate the development of this instability where other methods are unable to. Now to look at mixing measures and why they might be useful. So these give a visual measure of mixing in the whole domain as well as giving a value of mixing at any point in the domain and it's relatively straightforward to produce a global value from this for comparison between methods. Here we're looking at the volume fraction, the finite time Lyapunov exponent, a local measure introduced by Robinson, and a new measure I've developed that combines the volume fraction and finite time Lyapunov exponent. Here they're all considered for two phases. I shall quickly introduce the lid-driven cavity case to show these measures on. As in the single phase case, there's a square cavity with flow driven by a moving lid, but here the fluid is split into two phases with different viscosity and the same density as before. There's little literature on this case, but it does highlight the advantages of these measures since it shows regions of mixing and separate phases. First up is the volume fraction, which gives easy comparisons with, say, the volume fluid method. You can see here where either a single phase or both phases are present, but you can't see the relative movement of particles. The finite time Lyapunov exponent shows the movement of particles through a, a maximum ratio of the distances of particles that start close together. It gives a good understanding of the flow structure, so in particular it can be useful for single cases, but you cannot see the distribution of different phases or how well mixed they are. Next, Robinson's local measure, which I adapted to use the volume fraction. It highlights where the local volume fraction is close to the overall volume fraction, therefore where mixing has occurred but it does not show uh, relative particle movement again. So then I developed a new measure, which aims to take these advantages of different measures that we've just looked at and combine the normalized volume fraction and FTLE to show where both phases are present and where there has been large relative movement of particles. It looks generally similar to the Robinson measure. So we're getting all of that information, but also we can note that there's a region here with lower value since the particles here have moved less relative to each other than other areas of mixing. To conclude, I've introduced a model 
that accurately computes the two-phase Poisson flow velocity profile, the onset of interfacial instability in this case, and also the growth rate of this instability. You can clearly see the deforming interface, which gives potential for fu future work. I've also investigated the advantages of different mixing measures and developed a new measure for understanding the mixing and flow of two phases. Possible future work would be to investigate further this two-phase Poisson flow instability development using the capabilities of Joule's physics. Also to model more cases with this model with different viscosity models in each phase. And there's the potential to add these mixing measures to Joule's physics processing. Uh, the volume fraction is good for comparison with other methods. The FTLE gives information about flow structure, and this new measure gives an understanding of mixing in two phase flow. Here are the references that I've used in the presentation. Thank you very much for listening. If you are interested in this work, I published a paper on it last year. That's marked here. Thanks.